Huh? I, uh, I ordered the pizza with code. I like wrote code to order the pizza. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have a good one. Okay, man, I close for you. <laughs> that guy didn't give a shit. Hi, I'm Jarvis, and welcome back to Tech Tuesday. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to code. I'm not gonna teach you everything you need to know, obviously, but if you have absolutely no understanding of what programming is, you will walk away understanding a program, hopefully. And if you're someone who's more familiar with programming, like a CS student or something, you'll learn something too, I hope. I don't actually know if I can do this in four minutes, but let's give it a try anyway. Before we get started, I actually have a few announcements. Listen to my podcast, Sad Boys. It's a comedy podcast about feelings. Last week, we talked about career. And this week, we did our first video version of the podcast on self-esteem. You can catch a link in the description or like in a card or somewhere. And the other thing, I'm headed to VidCon tomorrow. So hit me up if you're gonna be there. I met so many amazing people last year and I actually was inspired by some of the talks that I saw to finally restart my YouTube channel after like an eight year hiatus. So if that was last VidCon, I have no idea what to expect from this one. Maybe I'll be inspired to quit. All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's talk about how to code. So coding, programming, and scripting are all pretty much the same thing. They describe the act of giving a computer instructions, usually in a list. Essentially like a recipe where you have a list of steps and things you have to do with each step. The act of writing code is like cooking with a friend where you're the one reading the steps in the recipe and telling your friend what to do. All right, now stir the pot. Can do. Except, your friend, okay, now give it a taste, is a computer. Because you have no friends, you're a programmer. Okay, I'm, jo I'm joking, I'm just joking. Your computer counts as a friend. Okay, but really, like knowing how to code is an invaluable skill to have regardless of your profession, so kudos to you for clicking on this video. But what do you do when you're hungry and you don't feel like cooking and your friends said that they can't hang out because they all signed up for voluntary jury duty. You do what any self-respecting programmer would do and you write a script that orders pizza for you. Huh? Sorry, um, couldn't you just order pizza on like the phone or the internet? Nah, Jarvis, you're a software engineer. Your entire career is based on building custom solutions to problems that have already been solved. So we're gonna give our computer instructions on how to order us a pizza. Luckily, Domino's Pizza in up and coming pizza establishment exposes an API that allows us to order pizzas programmatically. Now, I wish this was a sponsored video, but it's just the best pizza API I could find. So hats off to you, Domino's. Now, API here stands for Application Programming Interface, but we can think of it like a well-trained dog. Stay with me here. You can teach dogs tricks like fetch or like handshakes and stuff, but dogs don't really understand English controversial opinion. So those instructions have to be very specific. APIs are essentially the same way. They do a bunch of things, but the way you ask it to do those things is very specific. Going back to the dog metaphor, in order for a dog to fetch, you have to like throw something for them to bring back. So this is kind of what I mean. Domino's has their API and I want to write in Python because for those familiar with the channel, one out of one mediocre YouTubes agree that Python is the best language to learn programming with we'll be using some helper code that some random stranger on the internet wrote that'll allow us to write code in Python that is then translated into instructions that Domino's can understand. This is called a library. And with that, we just need to open up our Python interpreter. This is a program that allows us to write Python code and then shows us the result. Remember that code I mentioned that someone else on the internet wrote? It's called pizza pie and I can bring it into our interpreter by doing this. Now we have all of Pizza Pie's code at our disposal. I downloaded this code from GitHub, which is a website where programmers go to build their egos. Oh, I'm sorry, um, uh, share code. We wanna place our order with Domino's, obviously, but in order to make that order, we need our code to be able to do the following things. Know the delivery address, know the nearest Domino's, give them our order, pay for our order. Seems like a pretty straightforward recipe for pizza. First, we have to tell Domino's who their customer is. Me. Pizza Pie defines a customer as someone with a name and an address. So all we have to do to make a customer that Domino's can understand is give it that data. You can think of this as what happens when you enter your data into Domino's website. So here a customer is defined as someone with a name and an address. This is an example of something that's commonly referred to in programming as a class. It gives us a template that we use to define objects. An object is an instance of a class with defined variables. So for us, those variables are name and address. Once we plug those into the template, we've defined an object. We wanna hold on to this object for later so let's give it a nickname. We'll call it Jarvis. 
Here, we've assigned this specific customer object to a variable called Jarvis. Now we've got to find the dominoes that's closest to us. To do that, we're going to need some functions. A function is like a special trick that an API can do. The functions that we need are inside of a class called store locator. Think of that as a folder that within it holds all of the functions that we would ever need to find a Domino's location. The function we'll be using today is called store locator dot find closest store to customer. Seems self-explanatory. This dot here is essentially how we ask an object, hey, could you do this thing for me? Like, remember this Jarvis object from before? Hey, Jarvis object. Yeah. Can you tell me your first name? It's Jarvis. Neat. Hey, store locator. What's up? Can you tell me where the nearest Domino's to me is? Well, I can find the nearest location to a customer, but since you have not provided me with a customer, I can't help you. Ah, he needs more information. Oftentimes functions need additional input to do their calculations. This guy needs a customer. Let's assign that to a variable so that we can use it later as well. Anytime I wanna check up on these variables, I can just type their names. Here's my local Domino's. Now that we've got our store, it's time to create our order. I want a large deluxe pizza and a 20 ounce Fanta. Just to treat myself. I can't just say deluxe pizza and a Fanta and have the system understand me, so I have to give it these little codes that Domino's uses to understand individual menu items. So I went ahead and looked those up, and I'm storing them to variables called Fanta and Deluxe so that we can refer to them later. Now, to build our order, we're gonna be using another class exposed to us by Pizza Pie that is appropriately called Order. So this will allow us to create our own custom order object and add items to the order. First, we're gonna call a function called Begin Customer Order, and that takes in both a customer and the store that we're ordering at. And now we call a function called add item that's going to let us add items to our order. And now we can see that our order has two items in it. So we're almost there. One last step. We've got our order ready. We just have to add our credit card info. So we also have a credit card class that works much in the same way that the customer class does. We just add our information to it and we save it to a variable so that it's easy to send to Domino's. I can trust you guys not to steal my credit card, right? Now we just need to tell our local Domino's about our order and give it our card. The store class has a function that all of its objects get called place order. So we can just type in my local Domino's dot place order and give it our order and our card. Okay, um, all right, it looks, it looks like it worked. How long was that? I got a push notification for my credit card, so. I know this may have seemed overly simplistic for some, but it really isn't. And if this went over your head, thanks for sticking with us this far. People like to hold up programming as this very hard and difficult to understand thing, but I think that's an issue more with the available resources than the inherent difficulty of the task itself. Good code is just about the same difficulty to understand as what you were reading here. We covered variables, classes, objects, functions, and the concept of procedural programming all in this example. But that doesn't really matter. All that matters is we did something cool and I encourage you to do the same. I'll put up the code for this on my GitHub. I modified someone else's library to make these examples easier to understand. So feel free to take this and run with it and experiment and try new things. Let me know what you order. If this worked for you, tag me on Twitter or Instagram and show me your order. I'll also leave some resources down below for you to continue your learning if this really did interest you. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. I'll see you next time. Off to VidCon.